okay, I want to talk about this story that that was published uh, yesterday, and it's it says Activision Blizzard QA employees speak out about poor working conditions, and I have a real problem with this because I look anybody who follows me on social media or watches the stream or comes to the Discord, you will know that I don't have love for Activision. I used to have love, uh, uh, love for Blizzard, but certainly now with what's been going on, no, not anymore. I'm not defending these guys at all. But this complaint from QA, it just feels like dogpiling at this point. It's like I'm so tired of the press covering QA the way they cover QA. I started in QA, okay? I know the value and benefits of QA. I have promoted a number of people out of QA who have gone on to be producers and they've owned their own companies uh, and they're great designers. I am not a guy who shits on QA ever. I've named characters in the game, uh, in games I've worked on after members of the QA department. I, I, I get it. But it is an entry-level job. OK, it is it is if this article was like these guys and there were a couple things in here about the trans community not feeling welcomed at Blizzard in the QA department. Of course, that needs to be dealt with. That's unacceptable. But the vast majority of this reporting is dealing with like how long the hours are or they are under contract. And if they're under contract, they can't work for three months out of the year and they have to take three months off. That's every contract position that I know of in California. Sony does the same thing. That's just sort of the, 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 the legalities of it. You can't keep a contract worker on for a certain amount of time. Otherwise I think maybe they switch over and automatically legally become a full-time employee. And if you got a problem with that, that's fine, but take it up with the fucking, you know, with, with the courts or your legislators, but that's not, they're not breaking the law. They're not being suspect. They're not treating these guys terribly. It's, it's a business and QA as important as they are, are easily replaced. A good QA person is not, but QA is a volume game. If you've got a really good QA tester, that person is going to be promoted out very quickly to production or design or to managing other QA teams or writing QA design plans. But just getting someone to sit there and go, your job is to try to break out of the level in The Last of Us Part Two, And for the next three days, you're going to have this little section of the, the whatever the camp was, the football stadium with Abby. And I need you to find every place where the level looks like you can break out of and try everything. Try fast weapons uh, that, that have a, a different frame rate or that fly at a different clip that might trick the environment and let them pass through, try weird shit with vehicles, whatever. Hey, come on. It's a, it's demanding job. It's hard, but it's not something you got to go to school and study for. And, and I'm just, I don't know. I just, I get really bothered by it where it's just kind of like that they're, they're being mistreated. They're not being mistreated. They're, they're an entry level job. They're not having to piss in bottles like the Amazon workers. They're just, you know, one guy, one guy was quoted in one of these articles is like, it was my dream job to work and be part of the process. And I was crushed. I'm like, that would be like being an entry level production assistant in the mailroom at a movie studio and going, why, why can't I sit with Spielberg when he's directing and give him my ideas? It's like, cause you're in the mailroom and you're a production assistant. That's not what you do. Okay. Here's what Activision says. It's important that everybody is treated with respect. Of course. And I don't trust Activision as far as I can say their fucking name. I'm not saying they did that. When they talk about it being bad for trans folks there, I believe it. But this is what they say. It's important everybody's treated with respect. If any of our employees, full-time or part-time, raises concerns about mistreatment, we will work to address those concerns as soon as possible. Yeah, maybe you will. I don't trust you, Activision. You haven't earned my trust. There's no place in our company or industry or any industry for harassment. Sure, agree. We expect the agencies who employ contractors to adhere to the same standards. We have extraordinary talent contributing to game development and seek to improve how we recognize, reward, and encourage success of our people. Our business is changing rapidly, folks, and we continue to adapt and improve compensation to build and keep the workforce our company needs today and tomorrow. Fine. Useless statement. Means nothing. Means nothing. You're probably not breaking the law when it comes to this, and you're probably fine. 
Okay, they're, they're, they, again, it would be nice if reporting could be a little bit more nuanced around this. The sexual harassment, the toxic work environments, the anti-trans vibes that QA guys are getting and girls are getting from the Blizzard uh, testing department, fucking take them, to, take them to goddamn cleaners every goddamn day of the week. Oh, QA is really hard and they work us really hard and uh, we don't get paid a lot. And we, you know, I can't, aff- somebody's like, I can't even afford a house. Motherfucker, when I lived in LA, I couldn't afford a house. That's why I'm in San Diego. And I've directed some of the biggest games in the industry in that window. Fuck, get out of here. Jesus Christ. Um, Jaffe says VVLMM started as QA, but like he said, it's all about the networking that is how he went up. No, it's not all about the networking. I'm sorry, that's not accurate. I'm not, I'm not saying I wasn't a social guy and I didn't work with people and endear myself to certain people, but... I hustled and I pitched, I put pitches together for Disney that, that got the deals. Um, and I had meetings with agents all over town about getting, you know, actors into our games and shit like that. It was not just me schmoozing. It was me working and working. And again, this is a privileged position. Not everybody can work for free. I did my testing job and then me and Mike Guillaume, who went on to do like Warhawk with single track and jet moto and the con on PSP, we stayed late. We're like, fuck it. We're staying. We're working on the weekend. We're going to give our lives to this because we want to achieve. We want to succeed. I get that not everybody has those those opportunities and that needs to change if they want them, if we can get them for them. But no, it wasn't just networking. Well, fuck. I mean, Scott McClellan, go fuck yourself. Scott McClellan's like, Jaffe, this is all networking. Fuck you. You weren't there. I've done the work. You've done nothing. You're an Internet guy sitting behind a keyboard telling me what I know. There are people that did not like me at Sony ImageSoft, but still said, promote that guy because he's going to help us make money. Fuck you. You don't know shit. Aaron says, Jaffe, I'm just tuning in. Do you think you can work your way up if you're not a social guy? Sure. But again, keep in mind, the more social you are, the more, not political, but the more self-aware you are about how you come across, that will only help you. But truth be told, though, you know, it's money, man. If, 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 you, if you consistently, if you're in QA and you are a, have, show a great work ethic and you have smart comments and you find good bugs and you learn and you listen when the programmers explain why you're finding certain bugs. So the programmers start to rely on you because you, they know you as one of the QA guys that understands where a lot of the bugs are going to be found because you now understand the logic of how the missiles work in the game or something like that. All of those things are going to help um, and, and are going to be crucial to getting you out of QA. But yeah, I mean, it's, 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 you know, QA is a great job to start with and it is a great job to end with if you get into sort of the management of QA. But to be a QA tester... And it's fine if you just want to do it as a, as, a, as a job later in life. There's nothing wrong with it. But to act like, why am I not getting a seat at the table? Motherfucker, because you are at the lowest entry point on the totem pole. And that's not an insult. There's nothing wrong with being that. There's, there's no shame in that. My God, it's a job. It's a fucking legal job. And you know, some people would kill to have a job like that. But to act like it's more than that, than the brilliant stepping stone it can be, I just think is bullshit. That's right, Bane. People trying to downplay hard work. Jaffe put the time in and succeeded. Let me tell you something. I mean, it's work ethic. There are people who don't have work ethic, man. I I, I hate to um, I I hate to to say it, but a lot of people I worked with never got promoted out because they didn't. You know, I mean, I don't I don't know where this comes from. It's not like my dad sat me down and said, "Let me tell you about work ethic." I think you know what it comes from being desperate. I wanted success so badly that I was willing to fail and learn and then try a different path than the one that had failed before. Some people are okay just kind of chilling and it's like, yeah, it's a fun job. Hey, why am I not getting promoted? Well, because you don't get promoted because they're giving you a pat on the head. You get promoted because they think it makes them look better, right? Because you'll make them more money and they'll look like a good boss. Holy shit, your department's doing great, right? Well... If you're desperate for success like I was, if you're hungry for success like I was, it becomes all-consuming. And so the work ethic is almost a side effect of it. 
Right. Frankie Bean says there are people that just want to get along in life and people that want to grow and won't stop hustling. And neither is bad. That's the trick. A lot of people think you're shaming the ones who just want to get along. There's nothing wrong with that. That's a great life. Most people who hustle like a motherfucker are broken. They're insecure. They have holes they're trying to fill. If you're just like, nah, man, I'm fucking working. I don't need, I don't need the big house. I don't need the big car for validation. I'm happy with myself. I've got a good circle of friends. I'm digging life. That's a healthier place to be. It's like, yeah, I'm fine doing QA. You know, as long as I have a balance and go surfing on the weekends, whatever. I think it's great. One is not better than the other. But the problem I have is when someone does the, 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 the life that's chill. And then they have the gall to complain about why they're not getting ahead. It's like, why do you think you're not getting ahead? This is a business. Are you making them money or not? QA was an easy job, says Lyro. He's asking. Like you play to test games and troubleshoot. I want to be like that. Even I'm stopping until HSD. I don't know what HSD is. Um, it's, you know, it's mind numbing. It can be. Um, and games as they've gotten bigger, you have to sort of, you don't have to specialize, but you're given very specific tasks. When I was in QA, it was like, hey, I, there was three of us. And it was like, we're doing hook this week. And so... Everybody would just find a variety of bugs. Ah, I broke through the level here. This weapon doesn't work. This part's confusing. These days, because uh, the games are so big, it really can be a lot quicker to mind numbing than just like, oh, this is kind of a fun job, right? It's still fun because you get to talk and you're hanging out with people and they're all gamers and there's a nice camaraderie that forms and all that shit. But but ultimately, though, yeah, I mean, if now in a big game, like I said, it's like you're all about can Deacon's motorcycle break through the level in this specific area? And you spend three days just trying to find holes where he can go fast enough. So you've got to make sure you have enough gas and you got to make sure you've upgraded the bike across the board. And you've got to check all these weird little places uh, where you could accidentally leave. And I mean, it's fun at first, but then it just gets exhausting. Why shouldn't they make a decent wage, says Magello. Everybody should make a, a decent lay, a, a wage. Everybody should make a living wage. But welcome to capitalism. Hey, I don't think pure capitalism is the way to go, but this is what we got. But to answer your question, because we're in a capitalist society, why don't they make a better wage? Because they are easily replaceable. That's, that's the truth. Because if you go in there and demand, I want this, that, and the other, they say, yeah, no, but I want it and I'll be difficult. Yeah, fuck you, you're fired. Um, and they'll bring in 50 other guys or girls that want to do that job. That's why. The, these are, you know, these are, they're not evil, but their, their job is not to make your dick feel better. Bain says it's an entry level job. Nobody's supposed to make a living wage on an entry level job. They're building skills on a network. I mean, there, there is truth to that. There is a very privileged position to have that view, right? I mean, that, there is a real problem there where even like you hear a lot of Hollywood assistants uh, that are like, I can't afford to do this. The only people that can really afford to be entry level are people who come from wealthy families or well-to-do middle-class families. Because you're working basically for free and you're getting subsidized by your parents. Um, I mean, it's very rare. It's not very rare, but it's it's much, much harder to not have means and be able to take on an entry level job. Right. Magello says, I guess I'm just kind of surprised that you're more antagonistic about this. I don't understand what you mean. I mean, I understand the English, but I, why would you be surprised that I'm more antagonistic? Magello says entry level is technically appropriate, but kind of dismissive. Well, tough shit. I mean, honestly, Magello, tough shit. That's, that's the other part. You know, I, I hate to sound like a cranky old man, but woman or man the fuck up. This idea that it's just, I mean, again, I don't blame you. I don't know how old you are, man. I don't blame a lot of these younger kids that are coming up and, and are like, everybody should, should expect respect and to be treated well and not harassed at a job. But the idea that people are running around with, $300 million projects that they're working with the team to carry on their shoulders. And they're, they need to worry about the title of your job might not be hoity toity enough to make your dick feel better. I'm just like, you, you're in one of the, you know, you're in an amazing industry. If you want to work in AAA, 
you're at a very good company in terms of pay and all that, comparatively speaking, to like working at McDonald's for an entry level job. Well, it's dismissive. Well, then fuck off. Magello says, I'm 35. I'm just saying QA is important. QA is crucial. But this is the problem. QA as a exercise in development, as a piece of the development puzzle, is crucial. You cannot ship a game without QA. Okay? But because QA is so easily replaceable on an individual by individual basis, it is not anything other than a stepping stone or a career that you're just chilling. But the, the idea that you're going to come to QA and you're going to feel like, oh, it's dismissive because you're saying it's an entry level job, even though it is, you're probably not long for that particular environment. Kodak makes so much money. Yeah, it's terrible. Magello says pay them. They don't have to. Don't that. I mean, what is the what? What are you not getting? Magello says pay them. They don't have to pay them any more than they are. You know why? Because I guarantee you out of the 200 or so people watching the stream at this moment, 20% of them, 30% of them, if I said you could go work in video game QA tomorrow, they would probably say when and where and how do I get there and what do I have to pay to a- arrive at that destination? Um, that's just the truth. And, and Aaron Kitch, I mean, you're just saying shit, but you don't know what you're talking about. Aaron Kitch says you can't build a business without a good foundation base. That's true. But then sentence two, you pulled out of your butthole, sir. I love you, but you pulled it out of your, your tushy. He says, QA is that base. No, it's not. No, it's not. You know how I know it's not that base? Your base is programming and art and design and marketing. That's your fucking base. You know how I know that? Because you can outsource QA overseas. That's not, if you can outsource an aspect of your job overseas to multiple companies at the same time, that's not a base. That's just periphery. Doesn't mean it's not important. I don't think, says Magello, those individuals should be shamed for arguing for better pay. No one is shaming them for arguing for better pay. You get, get as, you know, get as much as you can. I, I, I have no problem with that. Get as much as you can. But I think what I'm shaming this for is more of the writers of these articles or the pervasive um, idea that QA needs to have, if not a seat at the grown-ups table, they need a seat adjacent to it. And it's like, no, they really don't. Again, you're talking to a guy who has promoted people out of QA who have gone on to be great designers, who have run their own companies, who are luminaries in the industry. I started in QA. I'm not shitting on QA. I'm saying that keep that job in perspective. That's all I'm saying.